Hello again, I am Blunty, and as this video goes live, we have almost exactly eight weeks until Sunbreak launches. Probably safe to assume if you've clicked on this video, you know what Sunbreak is, but just in case, and for the sake of structure, Sunbreak is a large expansion for Monster Hunter Rise. And unlike the core game, the Sunbreak expansion is launching simultaneously on both Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam. Big new locations on which to hunt, new story, new characters, a new hub town in a new place in the world, and rather more importantly, a big fat new roster of new monsters, and undoubtedly the return and revamp of monsters from older generation games too. Along with them comes new armor, new weapons, new combat style, and a whole new rank of difficulty. And in a little over a week from this video going live on May the 10th, there's a new dump of fresh information, reveals, and gameplay Capcom are wetting our appetites with, with a live stream. But the question becomes, for those finally taking the plunge into the game to ride the new hype cycle and player base refresh and revive that massive expansions bring, or for some like me who love the game so much we got it on both platforms, where do we buy Sunbreak? On which platform do we dive in? Which is best? Which is smartest? Where do we invest? A personal and somewhat pragmatic decision to make, and one those who know my powerful love for the game have started asking me more and more frequently recently as the Sunbreak launch looms. And I have made my choice, and it was a pretty easy one too, and I've not second-guessed it yet. So, I want to walk you through my own decision-making process, and maybe it'll help those of you on the fence build your own decision tree to come to your own conclusion. So here we go, let's dive in, and thanks along the way if you've commented, thumbed, subbed, and belled, and to those of you who use the newly activated new YouTube feature, super thanks, comments, where for some reason YouTube thinks people want to pay extra money to have their comments way more visible, sounds a bit weird to me, but hey, thanks a lot if you do, money in my pocket, I've, I've got rent to pay. I've made a bunch of videos on Monster Hunter Rise already, including a couple earlier this year where I've compared and contrasted the original Nintendo Switch launch versus the PC launch that came out nine months later. As you'd expect, the PC version runs at higher frame rates and higher visual fidelity, including 4K textures. However, the split release across two different platforms kind of inherently split the player base, especially considering despite loud and frequent fan outcry at Capcom, which they have admitted they have heard but claim they couldn't deliver on, there is a complete lack of cross-platform compatibility. No cross-save, no cross-play, no account transfer, nothing at all. The PC and Switch versions are utterly isolated and separated from one another in every aspect. The most passionate and eager fans, of course, wanted to get in on Rise right away, so they went on Switch because it launched there first. Nine months first. And when it launched, I even knew a few people who purchased a Switch exclusively for this game. That's how much people love this game. Combined with the hype of those players, content creators, and strong reviews that were generated, Rise on Switch brought on a bunch more new fans too. And while those who keep up on the detailed news always knew there was a PC port coming, it was never a secret. But I bet a lot of just, you know, regular players probably didn't know it was coming. A relatively small number of fans decided to wait for the PC release for a few reasons. Primarily from what I saw was a combination of just not having or wanting a Switch or just pure resolution and frame rate snobbery from PC elitists. And I mean that with understanding and love. There's a reason my own gaming rig has a 3080 Ti in there. I mean, aside from it being handed to me as part of a sponsorship video I did. Haha. <laughs> And many other players on PC who weren't necessarily waiting on it, but snapped it up when it popped up across their PC gaming radars and could easily look at reviews and countless hours of gameplay on YouTube and Twitch on the Switch version to see what it was all about and whether it was worth their time. The PC experience is, of course, technically the best. It's crisp as heck and playing at high frame rates feels wonderful. But there's a catch quite a large chunk of the Monster Hunter fandom are console gamers. The series itself lives most of its life on consoles, and it wasn't until Monster Hunter World in 2018, with a similarly delayed PC release to what Rise got, the main series entry was even available on PC, combined with the fact that Monster Hunter as a series has always been very, very strong in Japan. And again, it wasn't until Monster Hunter World where it was even well known outside of Japanese markets. Until the console release on PlayStation and Xbox in 2018, Monster Hunter was a very niche title in the West. Most people had never even heard of it, and fewer still who had heard the name knew what it was actually all about. So a lot of the established fandom, the global fandom of the series, were also console-first gamers, just by necessity if nothing else. 
And I run through all of this to point out there's a heavy console bias in the player base, both historically and culturally. And of course, in Japan, where the series has always been its strongest, console gaming, especially handheld console gaming, outstrips the PC gaming in popularity by a very wide margin. So, while the PC version is experientially, technically, demonstrably, objectively, quote unquote, better, for pure gameplay and visuals at least, being crisper and smoother, as I mentioned, I own both versions since their respective launches, I can tell you now, the player base on Switch is way, way healthier. And that is the primary reason I've already pre-ordered Sunbreak on Switch. I have a brute of a PC gaming rig, 12 core Ryzen 9 CPU, 3080 Ti GPU, 4K 60 FPS and above gaming on AAA titles is wireless for me usually and really, really nice. And in general, I have a strong preference for multi-platform games on PC because of the performance and fidelity I can get. But I'm sticking with the Switch for Rise and Sunbreak for a few reasons. I've never really had an issue with the graphics, and performance is at least very stable, basically now to 30fps for 99% of the time, and while in some games I can be a bit sensitive to 30fps stuff, in Rise it has always felt fine to me. So while PC is distinctly better, the Switch easily hits good enough on that score. However, one of the more pressing reasons being the hugely healthier player base I've been painting a picture of so far. I love me some random hunting to chill out with in the evenings. One of Rai's best features compared to World is just how easy and fast it is to jump into a random hunt and be matched up with a random team of hunters. It's super quick, super fun, and on Switch I match within seconds 96% of the time, and I mean that 96% literally. I kept track of it throughout an entire day of play over the weekend just gone. Only one in every 25 hunts did matchmaking take longer than a few seconds, and only half of that failed to match at all. It's a similar story when I host the hunt. No matter what hunt I choose, what rank, what monster, 90% of the time I'd wind up with a full team of hunters within the first couple of minutes of the hunt going live. And for those hunts that didn't get a full team at all throughout the entire hunt, I'd always get at least one other player in. And on PC? Yeah, that's, that's not a thing for either option. Matchmaking fails more often than it completes, actually. And I'm not alone in this observation. I've seen other people remark on the poor matchmaking success on the PC. And this is for two reasons. Firstly, because of the smaller player base. And on PC, we have Steam charts to actually track active players. So let's have a look. As you can see, we peak at about 23,000 right now. Not what I would consider an unhealthy player base, but I would bet London to a brick it is noticeably smaller than the Switch active player base right now. Sadly, we have no accurate way to track that publicly. But we do know that Rise has sold more than 8 million units. This is a number Capcom announced in January just after it launched on PC, so it's probably more than that by now. And the max player count the PC version has ever seen is 133,600 odd. That was during its launch window. Not directly comparable numbers, but it's a strong enough indicator. It gives us a pretty good hint about what's going on and how the player base is distributed. But the second issue only compounds this issue. See, it turns out matchmaking on the PC version of Rise is region locked. While you can play with anyone in the world manually by joining their lobby, automatic matchmaking is restricted only to your Steam store region for some stupid reason, which of course splinters the already smaller player base into nearly uselessly small player pools. And as much as I love the fidelity and fluidity of the PC version, I love the co-op multiplayer more. This game has always been designed with multiplayer in mind. Literally, the very, very first Monster Hunter game ever was among the first designed with the PlayStation 2's new, and back then quite novel, built-in online capabilities from get-go. It wasn't a feature added later, it wasn't something they decided to take advantage of, it was designed for it. In fact, the original design documents for the game that would eventually become Monster Hunter was a very different game indeed before they decided to double down on the multiplayer stuff. If it wasn't for PlayStation 2's networking, we wouldn't have Monster Hunter as it stands. And the majority of the content in every Monster Hunter game since has been designed with multiplayer in mind. And most of the single player stuff is intended broadly as a kind of extensive tutorial to get you good enough at the game so you don't instantly tank the multiplayer hunts for other people. 
Now, the game isn't dead on PC. I think it'd be unfair to call it a dead game on PC. In fact, the player base is actually growing right now in the lead up to Sunbreak and with the combination of a recent free weekend and the current price listing of 50% off for another week and a half or so. It's been encouraging more and more people to take a peek at it. But on PC, it will be better for those of you who already have friends who play actively and regularly so you can manually join a lobby together rather than rely on the random matchmaking options of the smaller and splintered player pools. For me, the PC version was always kind of intended as a secondary option, something to dick about with with mods and such. And although as it stands in the modding scene right now, it's 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 less than I'd hoped it would be. What I wanted was like brand new monster hunts and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Like World God. World has a fantastic modding scene. Right now, the Rise mod scene is pretty much 80% big boobs and tiny armor mods for weird little perverts and or extremely simple just skins for weapons and a few lazy cheats and such. I'm still hoping the modding scene evolves to be far more interesting sometime in the future but yeah as a place to really play Rise in my opinion you can't beat Switch. It wasn't a hard decision for me. It's the Switch. The multiplayer stuff contributing to this but also because I'm just about to cross 830 hours into my main save file which is obviously where I have the most resources collected, the most armor crafted, the most weapons, the most everything. I really enjoyed playing through from scratch a second time on the PC but even there I haven't quite cracked 100 hours in my save file which to be fair, it's still a lot of fun times. 100 hours in a game isn't nothing. And it's more than enough value to me to have justified the buy. I have no regrets about buying it a second time to play through on PC. It was a good experience. But yeah, bring on Sunbreak for Switch. I'll be playing there. That's where my Monster Hunter experience lives on the Nintendo Switch. This, of course, is the part of the video where I go, but what do you reckon? In the hopes of getting a few more comments at the, at the end of the video for those of you who have actually made it to the end of the video, which, um, you know, some of you do. <laughs> thanks for that, by the way. I am Bloody. We'll catch you next time. And thanks, as always, to the patrons. Farewell, monster. Yeah.